All right, everybody, welcome to the channel. As always, thanks for stopping by and hanging out for a few. My name is Rich, I'm the channel host, and nine times out of 10, we're talking about drone work. Specifically today, we're gonna to be talking about Metashape and some things, uh, some new tools in Metashape that I recently discovered for myself. Some of you out there probably already know about this. We have been doing a ton of testing with the Mavic 3 Enterprise. I'm still, it's a mixed bag of results for me. Some things I'm just not too thrilled about. And, you know, what we're going to do here, I'm just, uh, I'm letting this run in the background while we talk. So we've been doing some additional models, some video flights, some still image flights, and we've been doing some tests outside of our regular construction sites, which is good. We've got to try some other places out. So, Several days ago, we went out to Pointer Rocks RV campground in Prescott's beautiful Granite Dells. And while we were out there, we set up for a couple of flight missions, ortho mosaic missions. So we did not set up for a full 3D mission, the oblique setups that are offered in the Mavic 3 Enterprise. We decided to start square one. Let's just do two simple flights, north, south, east, west, gimbal pointed straight down, shooting at one one thousandth of a second. We actually captured over 800 images. So 400 of those were the east, west, 400 of those were the north, south. And um, I did not have high expectations. I knew that the ortho models were looking good, but I didn't have high expectations for a 3D model. And, you know, in the end, we ended up setting up for a 3D model. Now, by the way, in the upper left corner, what you guys are watching, uh, getting some captures in for another job site, not for Pointer Rocks. We're going to jump over to Pointer Rocks in just a moment to see uh, what came out while we were taking a look at it in Metashape. Now, keep in mind, there are two different versions of Metashape. One is Metashape Standard, which is under $100, I believe, still. And um, you can make 3D models with it. You can't do ortho mosaics, and you can't do digital elevation models with it. But then you have the higher end, the Metashape Pro, which is a couple thousand out of pocket. Um, but if you're doing a lot of professional work, it might be a desktop solution for you. Now, I gotta say this before we go further. This is not a tutorial. I'm not giving you a how-to on this. I just wanna share um, one interesting finding with Metashape. And you're still seeing we're shooting straight down here. So this is another ortho mosaic setup for our Solstice project, which we do every couple of weeks. And as you can see, boom, 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 taking shots one right after another. All right, I am going to change out of that screen. Let's go ahead and stop that. Let's go ahead and we're gonna grab Metashape Pro. There we go, there is our Metashape. Let's get that crossing the entire window. And so this is the Metashape uh, interface. As I said, this is not a tutorial, but if you are interested in the setup of the flight for generating this model, um, be it the setups inside the Mavic 3 Enterprise controller, or if you have more questions about Metashape Pro, please let me know, and maybe we can follow up on this one. So let's go up and, you know, I'm actually very excited if you can't tell, um, we are very thrilled with the results that we got. Like I said, the Mavic 3 Enterprise has been a super mixed bag for us. So this was kind of nice to see how well it actually modeled things for us. And the one big bonus, which you'll see shortly. All right, so here we are. We're actually in the screen and on Metashape. Let's go over here really quick because I wasn't kidding when I said to you, over 800 images. Once again, a north-south pass, east-west pass and um, worked out to be 817 images. So fun flight, and I'm just gonna zoom on down into here. So this is the Metashape interface. And um, what we're looking at right now is the 3D model version. Now, we did not have the gimbal at any other angle. It was 90 degrees straight down. You can move the gimbal up so that you can catch more facades and things, let's say if we were working on buildings. So I had low expectations for this model um, since we were shooting that way. We're gonna try the obliques on this later. But in the meantime, I just wanted to see, all right, what is this going to generate for us? By the way, number one, I'm just gonna zoom on in here. You can actually see this blue dot in here and that is the helipad. That's where we launched from. So we actually launched from one of the high points in the Granite Dells at this particular park. And I'm also gonna move this really quick and pull this out because one of the things that I did not expect 
was actually to get detail on the cliff walls. I had a very low expectation given how we were shooting this, given the fact that I was flying this for orthos, not 3D models. But this did a really good job on the 3D modeling. Look at the detail that we have on the cliff wall right there. Um, that's pretty impressive. Once again, there's our helibat. And uh, if we zoom this out as well, Let's just go over here. They do have a picnic area there as well. So apparently they were organizing all the picnic tables while we were shooting out there. So that made for an interesting scene. Now there's some uh, there's some lines in our way and we're gonna talk about those lines in just a minute. But let's go ahead and pull this out further again and just look around the area. So overall, I'm happy with this model. I think that the Mavic 3 Enterprise did a better job than my Mavic 2 Pro has done in the same location before. Let's go over, so once again, we are not doing a tutorial on Metashape, but Metashape is a great platform for doing orthos, digital elevation models, 3D models, generating point clouds. Um, this is a very powerful desktop solution if you wanted to do some of this work in-house, let's say. So let's take a look at the digital elevation model. If this doesn't give you a quick feel for the high points and the low points in the Granadels at this particular campground, I don't know what's going to give you uh, a better idea, but you can really see where we've got the major elevation and, you know, where those cliff, the big cliff faces are um, in comparison to the lower lying areas. Uh, we can also pull up that ortho mosaic. Great amount of detail with this ortho. So I was very impressed with the amount of detail as well. And so that's from those sharp, sharp images coming out of the Mavic 3 Enterprise for sure. And we can even see um, one of our friends who owns one of the uh, kayak rental companies in town. There's one of their trucks. So they're probably going to be going out for the day renting out kayaks for people to paddle on Watson and Willow Lakes. And overall, looking up here uh, at the uh, top side, we can see all the different RVs in there. Really, once again, really nice detail. This makes for a great ortho mosaic, you know, map. Now, the one thing that was unexpected after I offloaded all this is the second big part of this little talk about Metashape and the results of this drone flight. And that is... Um, we have been playing with 3D Vista for a little while now. That is a 360 tour generator and so much more. One of the things that you can actually do with 3D Vista now is actually bring three-dimensional models into 3D Vista and tie those together with your first-person view walkthroughs as well. So we've seen some pretty cool stuff. If you haven't checked it out, go over to 3dvista.com. Just watch their little intro bumper and you'll see what I'm talking about. Really cool fly-through of what looks like an ancient ruins. So it looks like we're flying in with the drone and then stopping at a spot. But in fact, it wasn't flying in with the drone, it was a 3D model being animated in 3D Vista. And that reminded me of my disappointment, my extreme disappointment years ago when I first started using Metashape. I wanted to be able to do virtual fly-throughs of a 3D model. That sounded like such a cool idea. And that was not something that Metashape offered at the time. They had a vertical mode and a horizontal mode, but you couldn't affect anything with it. Now I'm gonna zoom back out here, and what I want you to see, let's go back to the 3D model. And now that we're in the 3D modeling space, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit, and you're gonna notice some weird things. I got strange lines going on. What is up with this line? You know, this reminds me of a camera view from Drone Harmony only because it basically is a camera view, just like Drone Harmony. I'm gonna zoom this out. And so, bottom line, very simple. We made a uh, model fly-through, not the best model fly-through in the world, but my initial model fly-through um, that goes beyond just doing a uh, 360 around it or a vertical flight in. So you can actually build 3D flight paths into Metashape. When did it happen? I don't know. I hadn't been looking to try it out, but I just double checked and did a little bit of Google searching and then I found, yeah, you can do that now. So this is a feature that's new to me, but it might've been around for months for all I know. Um, we always pay so much attention to our client jobs that we sometimes forget to continue experimenting and learning. So here we have our 3D model and let's go ahead down in the right hand corner. I've got an animation panel here. Let me do a better job of zooming in on that for you. 
So now we have this little animation panel, and it used to be that you could just do, like I said, the horizontal or vertical, but recently they've got this append button in here, and after watching one video, I said, oh, we can actually add waypoints. So here we are on that left-hand side, you can see the different um, latitude, longitude, and also our elevation in there, so that is great. And I'm just gonna hit the play button. Once again, not a tutorial, and we could do a better job with this. I just wanted to share this with you quickly to say if you're a Metashape user, you should start experimenting. And if you're a Metashape standard user, so you don't get to do the digital elevation models or orthos, that's okay. You can still do this animation in um, Metashape, the uh, standard edition. So if you wanted to make some fly throughs of your own, um, you know, your own 3D models, you absolutely can, even if it's just the standard edition. So I checked that out. I tested it on my old iMac, and sure enough, it does work. So we had that fly through right there. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to delete all of these. Let's just go ahead and remove them. I'm not going to hit the save button because I want to come back um, to this later, and I can bring it back. So as you can see now, we do not have those weird little lines, but as I said, back in the day, let's go see here. Um, I am just going, we're going to create. So under the animation panel, and you can move these panels around, so it might not be in the lower left corner for you. Um, what you're going to want to do is go up to your uh, uh, file. Uh, let me see here, our main menu bar up here. What we can do is go up to the main menu bar, go to view, and then we can see what tools we have turned on and not turned on. So I do have the animation panel right there, and I just dragged it down to the lower uh, left-hand corner because that's where I wanted it. All right, so there's the animation. And so what can we do here? I'm going to do a new animation. Let's zoom this out. And so normally what you were allowed to do in Metashape was either a horizontal or a vertical. Uh, let's go ahead with that horizontal. I'm gonna hit okay. And then it just filled in a bunch of data points for me. So let's go ahead and play. And so all it's going to do, kind of boring, you know, that's not a super exciting um, pass right there. I'm going to go ahead and let's stop that. I do want to zoom out and you will see, look at this. Uh, this is a circular area around our cameras. All right, I get the idea. But we don't want to use that one. Let's go back and do a new animation again. Let's try that vertical instead. And, oh, it probably would have been good if I cleared this out first. Oh, there we go. So there's the vertical version. So those were the two options you used to have. Now you have this third option where you can do so much more. I'm going to go ahead and stop this. I'm going to zoom this out. And let's just, I won't fully rotate these things here. So I will leave this to you to experiment with because it's got all these cameras going across. And we could append to that. What I'm going to do instead, I'm going to go back over to the animation. I'm just going to select it all, and I'm going to remove it all. And let's go back to our starting point. So I'm going to recenter on the model here. And let's try to replicate what I showed you at the beginning. So we're going to zoom in here, and there's our helipad right there. So I am just moving myself to where we've got the helipad over in the lower left corner again. Nothing's going on in animation, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit that append button. So let's zoom back out here and I'm going to click on append. Now I'm going to move my cursor area a little to the south here and we will append a second one. Now we've got two down here and now let's do this number. Let's get a tilt in there and let's also pull this back a bit more. All right, and we're going to append again. Now, this is not going to be perfection. We're doing this on the fly. We're doing this for testing purposes and also for having a little fun. Remember when drone flying was just about the fun? I sure do. I did. I still enjoy it a lot. <laughs> uh, but here, I'm going to append again. And then let's zip across the map here and maybe zoom into here on these rock formations. Let's give it a rotation. All right, let's rotate it back toward where the helipad was. And let's do an append again. And then I'm gonna zoom this out and we're gonna take ourselves down to the lower park area. And how about right there? We'll hit an append again. And now I'm going to rotate this. Whoops, a little too rough on the rotation there. 
There we go, Rich. All right, now we'll right about there, I'd say, and let's give that a turn again, and we'll do one more append. There we go. So let's try it out. Let's go back up to the top of this animation, and let's see here. All right, let's go ahead and hit the play button. So there it goes. Oh, I started it in the wrong spot. So um, we got this midway through. Sorry about that. Uh, we'll replay this again. But as you can see, we're kind of flying through this. All right, let's go all the way back up to the top animation. And let's hit that play button. So there it goes where the helipad is. Now it's readjusting itself. It's giving that rotation and bringing us down into the park. You could get really intricate with this. You could definitely play around with this and you know really bring up the quality in a 3d modeling area so this could be a new construction site this could be showcasing a beautiful rv park or resort or any number of other outdoor scenes where you want to get that feel of a drone fly through but maybe for one reason or another you're better off doing a 3d model instead so as i said this was an experiment to work with the Mavic 3 Enterprise some more. So we we're testing out doing an ortho mosaic setup with the uh, Mavic 3 uh, Enterprise. And, you know, we collected all this data and I just decided to take a look under the hood of Metashape again after I'd made my ortho and found, yes, indeed, I can actually do more with uh, model fly throughs now. So the other thing I am pulling out here, and as you can see, I can actually click on these cameras. So I could relocate this camera if I needed to. So I could bring it down. We could change the camera angle as well. So we have a lot of options in here um, to work with. So we could do something really slick. I'm gonna bring this one all the way down. By the way, you can export this as a .avi file. And that means that you can convert it in uh, your, uh, your video platform of choice and you can get a dot move or uh, mp4 or whatever but but the initial save here is a dot avi file all right so there's our fun one today like i said sorry it's not a tutorial let me know if you are looking for tutorials on this type of material and we'll see what we can do for you as always thanks again for stopping by and hanging out today i hope this was enjoyable and i hope that if you're a metashape user you run out and check out the updates to the animation panel and make some fun fly-throughs with your 3D models.